Hi, welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect Operations Center multi-factor authentication for Spectrum Protect administrators as of version 8.1.14. This provides another layer of security that can be added to the admin command approval that was put in place in version 8.1.9 or that can be used separately. If you look at this chart, the way that multi-factor authentication works is that a administrator with system privileges will register or update another administrator to require MFA. That other administrator at first sign-in will then be presented a QR code or a shared secret in text form that they can then use inside of a mobile app or desktop app to put the secret into an account and that account will then generate, based upon 30 second intervals, a token which will be used at sign in. And for sign in, they will still use their existing administrator password and then add on the six digit token. So, in order to set up multi factor authentication, you can either do a register administrator or an update administrator with the command MFA required equals yes. If you want to turn off multi-factor authentication, you can do that for another person. You can't do that yourself with MFA required equals no. Another option is you can provide the shared secret. Either you can generate that from a third-party tool, or you could use the same shared secret for the same admin on different Spectrum Protect servers. Simply specify shared secret and then provide that shared secret. And then another option for the update is if you do somehow lose your shared secret or the app that was maintaining those shared secrets, you can do a reset shared secret equals yes option. If you have the admin command approval turned on, then the update admin MFA required equals no is a restricted command that requires another administrator to approve. You can issue a query admin format equals detailed and that will show you if multi factor authentication is required for an administrator. If it's set to no, it is not required. If it's set to yes, then it is required at each login. And if it's set to transitional, that means an administrator has turned it on, they have not yet enrolled their secret passcode to an application and logged on with that new token. And whenever an administrator is in transitional state, they cannot do any other command except for help and generate secret commands. The applications that we use to take the secret and produce the tokens need to have RFC 6238. They need to be TOTP, which means they're time-based, utilize SHA-1, and then produce a six-digit token at 30-second intervals. And all of the devices that are used to authenticate the secret passwords and the Spectrum Protect 8114 and above servers have to be in sync with the current time. In this demo, I'm going to be showing you how multi-factor authentication works with the operation center. Your operation center spoken hub have to be at 8114 or above. And We'll go through a couple examples where we set an administrator to use multi-factor authentication and then that administrator logs on by scanning the QR code. I'll also show once they have gone from the transitional state into the confirmed state with multi-factor authentication required equals yes, how they no longer see a QR code, but they do still have to generate a six-digit code from their application. I'll also show you how you can copy the URI and use that in different ways to produce a token. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started with the demo. As of version 8.1.14, the registering and querying of administrators inside of the operations center is still done from the command builder. As a administrator named Trisha with system privileges, I'm going to register an admin called MFA underscore admin with the password of MFA underscore admin and with the MFA required equals yes. Next, I'll grant authority for that MFA admin of type system. 
And then if I do a query admin, RFA underscore admin, format equals detailed, You'll notice that multi-factor authentication required is currently set to transitional, which means the next time the MFA underscore admin logs on, they will have to go through the process of taking the shared secret, putting that into a multi-factor authentication application and generating a six digit code to pin to their password. And until they go through this process, they will not be able to issue any other commands. So let's go ahead and log out. And here you can see, I'm trying to log on as the MFA administrator. I'm presented with a QR code. And when I scan that QR code, it comes up with a account name of IBM Spectrum Protect. And then it generates a six digit code that I will add to the operation center log on. And this was in addition to the MFA admin password that I previously supplied. So now I'm logged on as MFA admin, and if I do a query admin, MFA admin format equals detailed, I'll see that my multi-factor authentication state is now set to yes, which means every time I log on, I will need to provide that six digit authentication code. So I've just logged off, I'm gonna log on again, as usual, I enter my administrator name, MFA underscore admin, and the Spectrum Protect administrator password. And then when I click log in, it will prompt me for the six digit token. So I go to the app on my phone and I reveal the current six digit token. That token is valid for 30 seconds. So I go ahead and enter that back in the IBM Spectrum Protect Operations Center and click continue and that logs me on. Another thing I can do is do a update admin, MFA admin, and then I can do a reset shared secret. And this would be, for instance, if I lost my phone and need to create a new shared secret and store that in a new application. For multi-factor authentication, I'm set to transitional. So when I log off this time and go to log on again, I will need to rescan the QR code or enter the shared secret into an application to generate a six digit token. Once again, I'll enter my Spectrum Protect admin ID and password. But now when I'm presented with the QR code, this time instead of scanning that QR code, I'm going to generate a URI, which by pressing that button, I'll be able to copy and if I paste it into, for instance, Notepad, I can break that apart. And the piece I'm interested in is this secret. So if I copy that secret and then go to, for instance, a online password calculator, I can enter that secret and it will generate a QR code for me. And notice here, this application shows me how many seconds that six digit token is valid for. So now when I enter that six digit token, I'm once again able to log into the operation center for the MFA underscore admin. Another thing I can do if I'm a system administrator is update other administrators to require them to use MFA. I can also take the shared secret and provide that to a additional administrator. This would be especially useful, for instance, if you have multiple Spectrum Protect servers that use an administrator with the same name. Now, when I log on as Trisha and go to log on, it will require me to go back to the place where that shared secret was saved and copy another six digit token. I'll paste that six digit token in there and then be able to log on. Notice it did not require me to scan a QR code or enter a QR code because when I provided that shared secret at the update admin time, it put the administrator directly into MFA required state of yes and not transitional. Okay, if you want to learn more about the multi-factor authentication, please do check out the other demo I have of using the command line to log on with multi-factor authentication. And that video does go into even deeper details on how multi-factor authentication works. Thank you very much.